Hey everyone, welcome back to Wednesday Night Core Group. My name is Pastor Hannah and I will be doing the lesson for you guys tonight. But before we get started, we're going to go ahead and um, jump into some prayer. There are a few prayer requests we have. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that um, Scott Thompson, Ellen and Myrna's son-in-law, passed away last night. So if you guys want to be praying for their family as, um, as they grieve and as they mourn um, and as they celebrate the life that Scott had, that would be great just to pray for comfort for them uh, wherever they need it. Um, in addition to this, we want to pray for Pastor Darren's dad, Tom, who's in the ICU on a ventilator with COVID. And um, we trust that God is able to heal and we are praying um, healing prayers for him as well as prayers for Linda Vargas, who's um, still struggling with COVID at home. And we want to pray for healing um, in her life so please remember her in your prayer. Randy's doing much better. Um, thank you guys for praying for him in that way. And um, another person we want to lift up tonight is Yvonne Muleman, um, who has diverticulitis. And she um, is on antibiotics for two weeks, and um, she, she has a colonoscopy on, on the 16th um, to determine if surgery is going to be necessary. And so we want to pray for healing um, because we, know, we all know that surgery is no fun. Um, but uh, let's just continue to pray for, for these people. And um, there are lots, lots more on this list. Um, I mean, if you guys can see like all the texts and, and the next page, uh, you know, there, there are just a lot of needs um, in our church at the moment. And um, I just encourage you guys to uh, look at the prayer list that we send out every week and, and pray for those people and the time that you spend with the Lord. Um, and I, uh, I just would encourage you guys to continue to lift these people up in prayer. So why don't we go ahead and start with prayer this evening. Lord, we want to thank you so much for this day where we get to come and, um, and hear your word and to celebrate the ways that you are moving in our lives for, for the joy that's in our life. Lord, we say thank you for the ways that we have people that love us, for the ways that we get to celebrate others, for the milestones that we've celebrated this week, whatever they may be. Lord, I, I thank you and praise you for the opportunities that we have a life um, where we get to celebrate things and, and praise you for your goodness and your faithfulness. And Lord, we pray that your faithfulness would continue um, as it reaches into the lives of these people that we want to lift up in prayer tonight. Lord, we pray for the Paulsons as um, they mourn the loss of Scott. It's really, really tragic, Lord, and the loss of life is, is really hard to go through. And I just pray that you would be with them, comfort them, let your spirit of peace just fall upon them. Lord, I pray for Tom tonight, Darren's dad, that you would be with him, bless him. He is a man with true grit and true um, love for you. And I pray that you would just be with him and bring comfort to the family and, and bring healing to that situation. Lord, I pray that you would just breathe a new breath into his lungs, that you would um, just bring healing to him. And, and um, Lord, let him have a quick recovery. Lord, I pray that you would be with Linda, that you would heal her from COVID. Um, it's not an easy thing, Lord, and I pray that you'd be with her and that you would, um, again, comfort her and, and be with her and bring healing to her body. And, and Lord, we pray that. We also pray for Yvonne as she um, has diverticulitis. Lord, I pray that you would be with her again, bring healing, Lord. I pray that you'd be with those um, who weren't mentioned uh, by name tonight, Lord. There are so many on that list, so many things that people are reaching out and trusting you with. And Lord, I pray that um, we would always seek you out. And Lord, we thank you because you are good even when our circumstances are not. And I pray that you would um, be with everybody on that prayer list with a spirit of peace and comfort and joy. Um, and Lord, I just pray that you would allow us, those who pray for these people, to be able to come with boldness to your throne and, to, and a sensitive spirit to know how we can help them um, in the ways that we can through prayer, through giving a meal through giving a hug through through writing a letter lord i pray that you would guide us and prompt us um, and lay on our hearts the things that we can do to act um, and encourage in these situations that prayer has been asked for um, i pray that you'd be with us tonight as we continue to move forward and and hear the word that you have for us uh, lord i just pray these things in your holy name amen all right, well, if you guys have your Bible with you um, tonight, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 4 for a lot of our, a lot of our verses. Um, if you don't, I will put 
most of these verses up on the screen, I say that pre-edit. So um, if some of them don't make it up there, I'm so sorry. But the intention is that they will be there. Um, so 1 John chapter 4 um, is, is kind of where we're going to navigate to. Um, but first, I want to share with you guys a story. So um, if somebody were to ask me, hey, Hannah, like, tell me about uh, somebody who you'd say is a hero in your life. Uh, the first person that comes to mind is this woman. Her name's Amy Whittefield, and she is the woman that um, that really, really fostered me in the faith whenever I was a teenager and, and had come to Christ. And um, she just took me right under her wing and has encouraged me and loved me so wholeheartedly, um, even though I wasn't even her own kid. And, and so it was just like a really, really sweet thing. She and her husband. Um, were like bonus parents to me and I mean I still call her at least once a month and we just catch up and it's always really really great um, but her husband his name is Carl and what he did for me was he taught me how to fish okay now I I don't know how many of you guys know this about me I love to fish am I very good at it not really um, but, so anybody ever wants to take me out fishing let's go um, but anyway so Carl uh, taught me how to fish and we would go to like some ponds around the area I'm from Fort Smith Arkansas if you don't know so we lived on the Arkansas uh, River it was just you know just a skip of a rock away and so um, we would go you know just just with their family we'd go out to eat or whatever sometimes and we'd be out going back to the car and Carl would have no idea where we parked the car but we go out fishing on the river and we find our way to um, you know to to put the boat back and then I start heading one way because I think the truck okay the trucks over here and he's like ah no Hannah the trucks this way and sure enough like he could walk in a straight line straight to his truck I don't know what the deal was why he could know directions while he's fishing versus like being in town doesn't really make sense to me but like what I do know is that his mind in that moment it's like it was a compass it was like he knew exactly like precisely where he wanted to go and so he taught me you know I mean what I what I've eventually figured out that I was going the wrong way sure yeah I mean but but he taught me that just because you're going even a little bit the right way doesn't mean that you're always gonna get right where you wanna be. So let's say I wanted to go to Houston, and I'm like, well, Houston's east of here. So I go like three hours east, and I'm nowhere near Houston because I went straight east instead of southeast. So like I can go a direction, and, and you have to make sure that you're precise in the, in the direction that you go. And so um, a lot of times when we're looking for this direction in our life and trying to make sure that we're doing and things the precise way to go the way that God wants us to go, we need to make sure that we're ready with a compass, right? And a lot of times that compass is scripture, right? God's word for us. And tonight I wanna to talk about, with the preciseness of a compass in mind, um, I wanna look at the direction that we have for how we love each other. Now, it's pretty interesting because um, love is something that we're called to do, it's something we're called to be a part of, and we want the way that we love each other to have the same level of attention that leads us in the precise right way. And if we're gonna love each other the same way God desires, we need to be very clear on what love actually is, and that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. John understands that getting this right is extremely important, and that is why he teaches us this truth, that whenever we embrace God's perfect love in a way that transforms us, that love does a work in us, and as a result, we love other people well. To put it in a different way, the love we receive from God should foster in us a love for others. And he says this really, really clearly in verses seven and eight, and it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. You see, God loves us so much that he wants us to love other people, to love the other people that he loves so much, just like he loves us. Now I realize when we talk about love, 
it can bring a wide away, array of emotions. There can be some tension with this word whenever we hear it. Oh, we can use the same word love. It may cause us to think of different things. For some of us, thinking about love causes you to feel safe. Maybe at home you know that your spouse or your family may not be perfect, but you know that they really do love you. So for you, that love provides like a, a sense of security in your heart. For others, when you think about love, and, and I think about this at my age, you know, whenever I'm single and I talk to a lot of other people that are single, it's this fantasy of what could be. Like this like one day, this like amazing person's gonna come and it's gonna be this, like so whimsical, romantic, and they're gonna sweep me off my feet and, and we're gonna live happily ever after. And so we have this idea of love um, as something that we're waiting on and instead of something that we can actually be a part of um, in the lives of others. And still for some of you, whenever you think about love, it's hurtful. Maybe in the past, someone who should have loved you hurt you. Or maybe someone in your life used love to manipulate you and take something from you. So whenever we look at love, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different lenses that people view it for. And if we're going to be clear on what God wants us to do in regard to the way that we love each other, we need to make sure that our definition of love is the same one that we see in Scripture and, and the one that John used. In this section of 1 John, John provided a very clear picture as to how God defines love. And here is why this is important. Why, why we need to have this, this understanding. And because whenever we are able to understand the truth about how God defines love and embraces that love, we'll be able to have discernment about how we follow God in that love and how we're able to love others in the way that's genuine. And this is exciting because we know that the truth, that the love we receive from God fosters in us a love for other people, right? I've said this a few times. I hope you're kind of picking up that I keep saying this. And we're going to dive into God's Word today. And, and I have, um, in, in the following verses, John gives us these characteristics of how God defines love. And he gives us examples as to how we see these characteristics in the life of Jesus and points towards how we, as people, as the people of God, should respond. Now, the first characteristic of love that we see is that love sacrifices. Now, if you've been in any type of good relationship ever, all right, that's like a friendship, romance, what, what, you, you pick it, right? A good, a good, healthy relationship where you love someone has, like, you sacrifice, you, you sacrifice for that person. So, you know, just the idea that I hang out with my, my friend, right? And I would, you know, she would say, oh, I want to do this. And I'm, well, I don't really want to do that. But since you really want to do it and I love you enough, let's go do that thing that I want to enjoy. But we're going to do it because I know you'll enjoy it. And so, like, even that small thing, that's like, that's a sacrifice. And so love sacrifices. And that's a characteristic that we see. And the first thing that John teaches us is that love sacrifices. And whenever we look at verses 9 through 11, this is what it says. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Now, John starts this passage by giving us the best illustration. Nothing illustrates what love is better than the example of what Jesus did by coming to the earth and dying on the cross as a sacrifice that love sacrifices for our sins. The Bible teaches that we have all sinned, and now we throw this word sin around a lot in the church, and so I think it's important to really define what we mean when we talk about sin. Sin is our act of rebellion against God, His plan, and His creation. When God created all things, He created it in a way that's orderly. And there's a way that He designed all things to operate, and whenever we rebel against God's order, the Bible calls that sin. Whenever there's something that breaks the relationship between God 
in us. That is sin. When we're walking in sin or are outside of a relationship with God, the Bible says that we are dead in our sin. In another place, it says that we are the enemies of God. Now, let's pause here for a second. This is the idea, all right? This, this idea that we are sinners and at odds with our Creator is not unique to Christianity. This is something that's common in lots of other worldviews and lots of other world religions. Many other worldviews and religions believe this exact same thing, that we are at odds with the Creator. However, their beliefs are that each person like, has their own responsibility to fix it. That it's each person's responsibility to restore their relationship with God. And what separates Christianity from these other worldviews and these other world religions is what we read in verse 10. And it says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, while other worldviews believe that we are the ones that are responsible for restoring that relationship between us and God, they believe that what we have to do is good works to have a right relationship with God. The Bible teaches us that God did that work for us. That God loved us so much that He took that step to do those good works to restore and have a right relationship with us because the sacrifice was worth it. Here John is saying that it is Jesus who pays our sin debt and appeases God's wrath. Right? It's this thing where Jesus says, I'm going to do this so that you can have a right relationship with God. And our responsibility is to respond and say, thank you. I would love to have a right relationship with God. In the Gospel of John, John writes in chapter 3, you guys all know this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now Jesus teaches us that unless we believe in him, we stand condemned. But when we believe in Jesus, we can spend eternity with him in heaven. And that is what we call the gospel, right? That's the good news. The good news that Jesus did this work and that we don't have to atone by our own good works because we would never make it, right? Because God loved us so much that he did, did that. The gospel is an amazing thing. And John goes on again in verse 11, back in 1 John, um, what our response should be. It says, dear friends, since God loved us, what do we do with that love? We ought to love one another. John again tells us that the love we receive from God should foster in us a love for other people. If we embrace the love of God personally, we should love others sacrificially in the same way that Jesus loved us. Now love not only sacrifices, it also abides. Now that's a weird word, abides, right? But when we look at verses 12 and 13, it says, No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He lives in us. He has given us His Spirit. So with this second characteristic, the first being that love sacrifices, we move on to the second characteristic. Um, and we see that love abides. We see the second characteristic as, you know, God's authentic love and that He abides in us. This word abide means that He stands with us. John teaches us that whenever we follow God and love others, we are doing what He does. Right? Whenever we love Jesus, that we do what Jesus does. And that's loving others. It's a call for us to be in unity with God. I want you to think about abiding with God in this way. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you need to do what Jesus does. It's this idea of reflecting the image of God and, and showing His character to the people around you. John teaches that the way that we have the ability to do what Jesus does is because the Holy Spirit is in us and working through us. You see, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, sometimes we might feel a little bit intimidated because we don't really know what to do with it. And while he has many roles in our lives as Christians, I want to share two things that I think are important for us to consider about the Holy Spirit as the Spirit and God abides 
with us, right? The first thing is that the Spirit guides us. John 16, 13 says, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. And it's so comforting to me to know that God has sent His Spirit to live in us, to guide us, right? To, to, to lead us in the ways that reflect the image of Christ. And as we talk about walking in truth and having discernment, knowing how the Holy Spirit works is an incredibly important thing as a believer, to know that the Holy Spirit guides us and that, that the Holy Spirit, number two, empowers us, right? It says, but you will receive the power, Acts 1.8, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit, another thing that the Holy Spirit does whenever He abides in us is to empower us. Whenever we fear, whenever we have these things that we experience where we're like, ah, I don't know about this, the Holy Spirit emboldens us. The Holy Spirit literally gives us boldness. Whenever we would normally shrink, we are emboldened to speak truth and to live life to the fullest as Christ has called us to. And while there's so much more that the Holy Spirit does in our lives, we can be confident knowing that we are not alone. Because when we are walking in the light, we can know that God is for us and that God is with us because He abides in us. As believers, when God calls us to love one another, He's calling us to walk in unity with one another. John says in verse 16 that when God abides in us, His love is perfected in us. If we all have been changed by God's love and we're all walking in the same direction, right, the same precise direction, like that compass I talked about at the beginning, we can have this unity that reflects God himself, this unity that says, hey, we're a group of Christian people and we reflect the fruits of the Spirit, right? This idea that we're unified in the ways that we care for one another. This is so good. I I love it, all right? We're, we're going to keep reading. We're almost done. Um, the third characteristic that I want to talk about tonight is that love, God's love, secures us. Let's look at verse 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So that third characteristic, it's that love secures. In light of everything we've talked about tonight, I want you to consider this amazing truth that the gospel shows us that we belong because we have been bought with the love that sacrifices, not because we behaved, right? In other words, our standing with God didn't change because we were good enough to follow God or that God found us useful. You know, God chose us, God pursued us, and bought us with this act of divine love called grace. And grace is what transforms us. And whenever we have this grace, we can know that we are secured in the love of God. Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Whenever we repent of our sins and we believe in Jesus as God's Son, as, as our Lord and Savior, the Bible says that we are sealed and that nothing can separate us from God. This love is secured. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And we don't have to fear repercussions when we fall because instead what we have is this understanding of God's grace that says, God, I'm sorry. I've been here before. I've sinned. I've broken relationship before, but I'm sorry. God says, it's okay. Just come, come back. We can pick up where we left off. I forgive you. Right? And then you go and you continue to walk in this right relationship with God where we abandon our sin. We sacrifice, right? That love that we love God so much that we sacrifice our desire to sin. And we say, that sin isn't worth it because I love God so much. And God abides in me and his love secures me that I am going to walk in this life that God has called me to knowing that he has saved me when we understand this love that God has for us it also takes the pressure off of us in our relationship with others right because because it says 
I love God and I want to love other people like God loves me. And so I have nothing to prove. And we can rest in knowing that we're good enough for God and we're good enough for each other. We can walk in freedom knowing that we are loved fully by God. And that we can love God fully as a result. And because of that, all those things, we can love other people. Because what did I say at the beginning? That God loves us so much that God wants us to love others. And we can do this because we use scripture, God's word as the compass that leads us straight. And we fully understand that the love we receive from God is something that we get to pour over into the lives of others. Now, as we wrap up tonight, I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine your life. And I, I wonder, what would it look like if our entire congregation bought into this idea? This idea that love secures and it abides and it sacrifices and that we get to love each other so well because of what God did for us. I wonder what, I wonder what life would look like if all of us bought into that. What would it look like if we tried our best to love others the way that God has loved us, like we're told to do in this passage from 1 John tonight? I think we would have a place where you could come and you could be authentic. And you wouldn't have to feel the need to be good enough or prove anything to anyone because you just get to come and know that you're loved by God and that you get to love others. You don't have to worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what other people think. Just know your relationship with God and express and experience that love of God. You'd be able to be fully known and loved and do that for others. And I believe that's what God wants for us. I think we all fall short, and I think sometimes we don't love each other as well as as God calls us to. I know I don't. I wonder if you guys feel the same way. But he loved us so that we can love one another authentically. And as a result, be a light to the world around us. So my challenge to you this week is to love others as God has loved you. Maybe you don't even know how God has loved you yet. And if you, if you haven't experienced the love of God, I encourage you to read the Gospels and see how we experience the love of Christ in the world through healing, through good word, through challenges to be better people. Embrace that love, share that love, and share the light. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to know your love and to let that love foster in us a love for others. I pray that you would be with us this week as we take on this challenge to um, love sacrificially and understand that you abide in us and that your love that your love secures us, Lord. I pray that you would be with us as we um, embrace this truth for the first or a hundredth time, Lord. I pray that you would um, transform our hearts to know you more, to reflect your image better. Lord, I pray that you would be with us this week in the ways that we're struggling. I pray that you bring comfort. I pray that you bring wisdom. Lord, I pray for us in the weeks, in the ways that we are um, thankful and filled with gratitude. Thank you for the ways that you provide for us and the ways that you are a joy and a light in our life. Lord, I pray for those who need you. I pray for us that we would be the light that shows people who you are. We love you so, so much, Lord. We ask all these things in your name. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, We'll see you next week. God bless. Have a great night.